Hello and welcome. This is a video on line integrals of scalar functions. Now scalar functions um, are functions of the form f of x comma y comma z. And we're taking a line integral, which is a special type of integral over a line. And that line is actually a curve, c. We're, we're writing c as that curve. And then ds here is actually the arc length. So when you see this notation, the integral over c of f of x comma y comma z ds, this is a line integral. And ds is actually the arc length. And um, c is the curve or the line that we're traveling along that we're integrating. But all that fancy language aside, um, we're going to be using this formula here. It's the integral from t equals a to t equals b of f of g of t, h of t, k of t times the length of v of t dt. Now this can be a bit dry and a lot to look at, um, but what is all this stuff? Um, g of t, h of t, and k of t are actually going to be the three functions that we have for our three components of our vector function r of t. Okay, so r of t is g of t times i plus h of t times j plus k of t times k. And if you find this to be too abstract, it's okay. We're going to do an example in just a minute. Um, but this is the stuff that's behind it. Uh, so we have some vector function r of t with three components. And we're basically taking those three components and we're plugging them in for x, y, and z into our scalar function f. Okay, so we're plugging in the three components of our vector function into the components of our scalar function f. And then we're multiplying that times the velocity function's length. Okay, so the length of the velocity function, v of t, dt. And this here, the v of t dt, is actually the same as our ds. Okay, and this, this complicated looking formula actually isn't that bad when you're using it. It's just the way they have it written, it looks complicated. All right, and t is our parameter, and t is going from a to b. All right, so... While that looks mind-blowingly complex, um, it's like I said, it's not that bad when you're doing an actual problem. So let's take a look at this problem. I probably won't be able to do more than one or two of these because they take a while, um, but we'll see. Okay, so let's take a look at least one of them. Okay, so example. Evaluate. The integral over the curve C of x plus y ds, okay, x plus y ds, where our curve C is a straight line segment is the straight line segment x equals 2t y equals 4 minus 2t z equals 0 Let me zoom out a little bit here so I have room to write all this. x equals 2t, y equals 4 minus 2t, and z equals 0. And we're going to be evaluating this line integral. That's called a line integral. From 0, 4, 0. 
to 4 comma 0 comma 0. Okay, so we want to evaluate a line integral over the curve C of x plus y ds, which is just the standard setup for a line integral, where capital C is a straight line segment. And as you can see, in this case, the curve C is actually a straight line, which is where the term line integral comes from, because we're integrating over a line. It doesn't always have to be a straight line. It can be any curve C, though. So they can call any curve a line integral. Okay, but here we're just doing the straight line segment, x equals 2t, y equals 4 minus 2t, z equals 0, from 0 comma 4 comma 0 to 4 comma 0 comma 0. So how do we do all this? Um, there's a lot of stuff here. But the basic idea is you use the formula that I wrote up here, and you plug in your x, your y, and your z components of your vector function into your scalar function. And f of x comma y comma z is the scalar function. These are all the vector functions, g of t, h of t, k of t. Those are the components of the vector function. So plugging them in there, um, we're going to be plugging in x equals 2t for x, and we're going to plug in y equals 4 minus 2t for y, and then of course z equals 0, so there's nothing to really plug in because there's no z here. Um, even though z equals 0, there's no z here, so we wouldn't plug in 0 if there's no z to plug into. So um, what we've got here is we have the integral, oops, wrong color. We have the integral from a to b of 2t plus 4 minus 2t. Okay, so there I plugged in x and y. Um, and then we have to multiply this times the length of v of t. Okay, so the length of v of t dt. The length of v of t dt. So that's the length of the velocity function. Um, and remember that the velocity is the same as the derivative of the position. So v of t is just going to be dr dt. All right. So v of t is the same as dr dt. And we want to take the length of that. Okay, so this is dr dt. And we're taking the length of that vector. And you might be wondering, well, what's a and b? Well, t has to start at a, and t has to end at b. So where does t start? Um, we have these functions, x equals 2t, y equals 4 minus 2t, and z equals 0. So the easiest one to work with would be the x component. So I notice that x equals 2t and x starts at 0, and x ends at 4. So what I'm saying is this is x comma y comma z, x comma y comma z, and we also know that x is 2t, okay? x is 2t. So what we can do to find a and b is we can set 2t equal to 0, that's where it starts, and then 2t equals 4 is where it ends. Because we start at 0, 4, 0, and we end at 4, 0, 0. 
Okay. So we start at 2t equals 0. Let me write that over here. Start at 2t equals 0, which is the same as t equals 0. And then we end at 2t equals 4, which is the same as t equals 2. Okay, so we start at t equals 0 and we end at t equals 2. Okay, so what's that going to look like? Um, well, t equals 0 is a, and t equals 2 is b. We just calculated a and b by taking the, the x-coordinate was the easiest one to work with, and we knew that 2t started at 0 and ended at 4. So that gave us t equals 0 and t equals 2. Okay, so we have the integral from t equals 0 to t equals 2 of, we can simplify this, the 2t minus 2t is 0, right, these cancel, so we just have the integral of 4 times the length of dr dt dt. Okay? Um, so this isn't going to be too bad of an integral. The only problem is we have to calculate this dr dt, and then we need to find the length of it. Because remember, v of t is the same as dr dt. So v of t here is going to be um, the derivative of r. And uh, you might be wondering, well, what's our r of t? Well, our r of t is going to be 2t, 4 minus 2t, and 0. So 2ti plus 4 minus 2tj plus 0k. Okay, so r of t is equal to the x component, which is 2ti. plus our y component, which is 4 minus 2t j plus our z component, which is 0k. Oops. Okay. And v of t, which we need to calculate, is dr dt. Okay, v of t equals dr dt, the derivative of r, and that's going to be 2i um, plus negative 2j plus 0k. Okay, so 2i minus 2j plus 0k. How did I get that? I took the derivative. So the derivative of 2t is 2i. The derivative of 4 minus 2t is going to be negative 2 times j. And then the derivative of 0 is 0. And then um, remember, we don't just need v of t. We need the length of v of t. Okay, so the length of v of t is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares. So it's going to be the square root of 2 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 0 squared. Okay. So 2 squared is 4, and negative 2 squared is also 4. Okay, so we have the square root of 4 plus 4 plus 0, which is uh, the square root of 8. 
Okay, and of course we can rewrite the square root of eight as uh, root four times root two, which is two root two. So the length of V of T, which is the same as the length of dr dt, is equal to two root two. Okay, so we can now plug that in uh, back up here. So what do we have? We have this integral from t equals zero to two of four times two root two dt. Okay, so this is now gonna become the integral from t equals zero to t equals two of four times two root two dt. Okay, and four times two is eight. So we have eight root two, which is a constant, and we can factor that out front. So we can factor out four times two is eight root two out of our integral. So we have eight root two times the integral from zero to two dt. So this line integral, once you set it up, is actually really easy uh, because the integral of dt is just t. So we have eight root two times t, and we're evaluating t from zero to two. Okay, because the integral of dt is just t. And then plugging in the top number, we get two and then we subtract the function evaluate at the bottom number, which is zero. So we have eight root two times two minus zero. Okay, and of course two minus zero is two. So we have eight root two times two, which is 16 root two. Okay. So we just calculated a line integral, and I'm not lying about it. That's how you do a line integral. Ha, 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 ha. No, not funny. So um, so that's a line integral, and it's called a line integral because you're calculating um, an integral along a line. And again, this one was a straight line, but it can be any along any curve. And these have lots of applications in physics and engineering. Now that was a relatively easy one. And that's 16 root two, that's our answer. Okay, so I wanted to do, since I have a bit of time, I wanted to do one more. Um, okay. So let's take a look at one more. So for my next example, um, what I'm going to be doing is actually, it's really two examples in one. It's two problems in one. So a new example, evaluate the integral, evaluate the integral over the curve C of x ds Okay, so here our function is very simple. It's just x ds, where c is well. In part a, we're going to be doing the straight line segment. X equals t, y equals t over six, from zero comma zero to forty eight comma eight. Okay, so the straight line segment
x equals t comma y equals t over 6 from 0 comma 0 to 48 comma 8. Actually, let me just zoom out here. From 0 comma 0 to 48 comma 8. Okay, so what's interesting about this one, uh, this is going to be part A. We're also going to do a part B, but right now I'm going to focus on part A. Uh, what, what's interesting about this one is um, we're only in two dimensions now. So the formula is going to be a little bit different. So how do I know we're in two dimensions? Well, they're giving us these points, 0, 0 and 48, 8. Um, that's actually x, y for each of those. So we don't have a z here. Um, so the formula is going to be very similar. It's just not going to have a third component. So what we're going to do is we're going to be doing the integral over c of f of x comma y ds. This is now going to equal the integral from t equals a to t equals b of f of g of t comma h of t times the absolute value of b of t dt not absolute value the length excuse me it looks like an absolute an absolute value but it's actually the length of v of t dt okay and um it's, it's exactly the same formula as before. The only thing that's different is it doesn't have a third component. So it has a g of t, has an h of t, but it doesn't have a k of t. Okay, but it's going to be the same idea. Okay, we start at 0, 0, and we end at 48, 8. So probably the easier component to work with would be x here to figure out our t equals a and our t equals b. Okay, so x starts at 0, and x ends at 48, and x equals t. Okay, so t starts at 0, and t ends at 48. Okay, so um, t equals 0 is where we start. And t equals 48 is where we end. OK. And then um, our function f is the scalar function they gave us, which is x. So here, our f is just going to be x. That's f. And we want to plug in, um, since it's just x, we're going to go ahead and plug in uh, t for x into this formula. So we're going to plug in this t here in for x. Um, so we actually just have the integral of t times the length of v of t dt. Okay, so we have the integral of t times the length of v of t dt. And how did I get t? Well, our function f was just x. Okay, and for x, we plugged in t because x equals t. So literally all I did there was plug in t for x. And then instead of writing ds, I wrote the length of v of t dt. And this length of v of t dt, this is our ds. 
which is called the arc length differential. You might see that terminology used um, in our book. DS is the arc length differential. Okay, um, but just like on the last problem, we're going to have to calculate uh, V of T, which is dr dt. Okay, so over here, I'm going to calculate V of T, which is the same as dr dt. But in order to do that, of course, we need to write down what R is. So what's r in this problem? Well, r of t, r of t, hold on, let me just move this over here. Okay, so r of t is has the x component is actually t, and the y component is t over 6. So R of T is going to be T times I plus T over six times J. Okay, and uh, how did I get that? Well, they told us that X equals T in a straight line segment and Y equals T over six. So that's gonna be the X and the Y components of our vector function R of T. Okay, and then um, DR DT is v of t, which is going to be the derivative of each of these components. So we're going to have the derivative of t is 1, and the derivative of t over 6 is 1 sixth. So we have 1 times i is i plus 1 sixth times j. Okay, that's our dr dt. All I did was take the derivative of t, which is 1, so that's 1 times i, and then I took the derivative of t over 6, which is 1 sixth times j. And then from here, um, all we really have to do is find the length of v of t. That way we can plug it into our formula over on the right. So um, the length of v of t the length of v of t is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So that's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 sixth squared. And we don't have a third component here. There's only two components because it's in the xy plane. So what we have is the square root of 1 plus 1 over 36, okay, which is the same as the square root of 36 over 36 plus 1 over 36, which is the square root of 37 over 36. Okay, and then you can distribute the square root uh, to the top and the bottom. So we actually get root 37 over root 36, and root 36 is 6. So we get the square root of 37 over 6. And that's the length of v of t. Okay. So now that we know the length of v of t is square root of 37 over 6, we can plug that in into our formula up here. Okay, so in our arc length differential, we have uh, the length of v of t, length of v of t dt. And we just figured out that the length of v of t in this problem is root 37 over 6. So we can go ahead and plug in, oops, 
we can go ahead and plug in root 37 over 6 for our length of v of t up here. Okay, so what's that going to give us? We're going to have the integral from t equals 0 to 48 of t times root 37 over 6 dt. Okay, so the integral from 0 to 48 of t times root 37 over 6 dt. So all that work, and it ends up not being too hard of an integral. And fortunately on your homework, if you're in my class, um, on, the, on our homework problems, they aren't too bad, but most of the line integrals just end up being the integral of t or the integral of dt once you get to the end here, which is fortunate that it's not too difficult once you get through all this other stuff. Okay, so for the root 37 over 6, we can factor that out front because it's a... Uh, um, it's a constant. So if we factor out the root 37 over 6, we get root 37 over 6 times the integral from 0 to 48 of t dt. Okay, and of course the integral of t is going to be t squared over 2 because you add one to the exponent and then you divide by the new exponent. So we have root 37 over 6 times t squared over 2 t squared over 2 and t squared over 2 is evaluated from t equals 0 to t equals 48. Okay, and then um, for that one, we can just plug in the 48 and then subtract the function evaluated at 0. So we have 48 squared minus 0 squared, and we can factor the 1 half out front. So we have root 37 over 6 times 2 is 12. So you should have root 37 over 12 times 48 squared minus 0 squared. So all I did was I factored the 1 half out front, and 2 times 6 is 12 in the denominator. And then I plugged in 48 for t. So I got 48 squared minus plugging in 0 for t, I got 0 squared. Okay? And then um, 48 squared is the same as 48 times 48. Okay, so we have root 37 over 12. Okay, root 37 over 12 times 48 times 48. And I know that 48 divided by 12 is 4. So these cancel out and give us a 4. And then 4 times 48, let's see, 4 times 8 is 32, carry the 3, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. So we have 192, is that right? Okay, so we have 192 times root 37. Oh, that's correct. So that's good. I didn't even have to use a calculator. Okay, so 192 times root 37. Not so bad. Okay, so that was another example of a straight line segment. And um, I guess I have time for one more, which was the other part of this example. So we're going to use the same instructions. Evaluate the integral over C of x ds 
But now we're going to be doing part B of our example. Okay, so for part B of our example, for part B of our example, we're actually going to be doing um, where C is the parabolic curve, the parabolic curve. And parabolic, of course, has the word parabola built into it. Parabola. Well, it has an I, but, you know, parabola, parabola. It's the parabolic curve. X equals T comma Y equals T squared. And we want to do this from zero comma zero to four comma 16. From zero comma zero to four comma 16. And we're doing the parabolic curve x equals t, y equals t squared. So once again, notice with this one, we only have an x and a y, but we don't have a z. Um, there's only two components. So it's going to be the same formula as we used on part a. Okay, so we're going to be doing um, the integral over the curve c of x ds and this equals the integral from a to b of f well f is just x here and x is t so we're going to be plugging in t for x so that gives us the integral from a to b of t times ds and ds is always the length of v of t dt. Okay, so it's going to have the same setup as the last problem. It's just our v of t is going to be more complicated. Because here our r of t is going to be t times i plus t squared times j. Okay, so I guess I'll work on it over to the left again just so that I have room. Okay, so our R of T on this problem is T times I, right? Because they told us that the X component is T and then our Y component is T squared times J. So it's T times I plus T squared times J. All right, and we want to uh, find the length of v of t so we can plug it in here. But first we have to find v of t. So we take the derivative. So we get v of t equals the derivative of r of t dr dt. So the derivative of t is 1. So we just have i for the first component. And then the derivative of t squared, using the power rule, we bring the 2 out front, and then we decrease the exponent by 1. So we get um, plus 2t times j. Okay, so v of t equals i plus 2t times j. And then we need to do the length of v of t. Right, because we need the length of v of t to plug into this line integral formula. So the length of v of t, the length of v of t equals the square root of the sum of the squares. So it's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 2t quantity squared. That's the length of v of t. Um, because the first component of v of t was 1 and the second component was 2t. Okay, so we get um, the square root of 1 
plus 4t squared for the length of v of t. Okay. All right. So plugging in, now we have the length of v of t is the square root of 1 plus 4t squared. So we have the integral from a to b of t times the square root of 4t squared plus 1 dt because 4t squared plus 1 is the same as 1 plus 4t squared. The order doesn't matter when you're adding. Okay, um, so what we can do here is we need to calculate a and b in this problem but they told us that x equals t and uh, x goes from 0 to 4 so that means t also goes from 0 to 4. So a is going to be 0 and b is going to be 4. So that's pretty easy. So we start at 0 and we end at 4. Okay. And then um, what we have to do next is we have to integrate this. And this one's a little bit trickier integral than the last one. But you can do a u substitution here would be the way to go. Okay, so we're going to let u equal the inside of our composite function. So u is going to be 4t squared plus 1. Okay, so let u equal 4t squared plus 1. And then du dt equals 2 times 4 is 8t. And then if we isolate dt, we get du over 8t equals dt. du over 8t equals dt. So we can plug that in the du over 8t in for dt over here. All right, so that's all good, clean, fun. So what do we have here? We have the integral from 0 to 4. Well, I'm not going to write the 0 to 4 right now. I'm just going to write it as an integral. Um, so we have the integral of t times the square root of u times du over 8t. Okay, and then the t's cancel out. We have a t on the top and a t on the bottom. And we can factor the 1 8th out front. So if I factor the 1 8th out front, I get 1 8th times the integral of the square root of u du. But instead of writing it as the square root of u, I'm going to write it as u to the one half power. So I can use, um, so I can use the power rule for integrals. So using the power rule for integrals, um, I add one to the exponent and I divide by the new exponent. So I'm going to be getting uh, one eighth, one eighth times uh, u to the one half plus one divided by one half plus one. Okay, and of course one half plus one is three halves. So we have one eighth times u to the three halves divided by three halves. And dividing by three halves is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of three halves. Okay, so we have one eighth times two thirds times u to the three halves. But remember, in this problem, u was actually 4t squared plus 1. 4t squared plus 1. Okay, so um, we have, instead of u, we can write 4t squared 
plus one to the three halves. And then out front, um, the eight and the two cancel out. And we get a four on the bottom. So four times three is 12. So we should have a one twelfth out front. Okay, and then we have to plug in, um, we said t went from zero to four. Okay, so t is going from zero to four. So we plug in four for t and then we subtract a function evaluated at zero. So we have one twelfth times bracket, uh, four times four squared plus one to the three halves minus four times zero squared plus one parentheses to the three halves. So that's a lot, um, but I plugged in four for t into the four t squared plus one to the three halves. So that was what we got here. And then I plugged in zero into the same expression and I subtracted just like you always do with the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, if you remember that from your calculus one. Um, so anyway, we can simplify this. Uh, four squared is 16 and four times 16 is 64. So we have 64 plus one is uh, 65 to the 3 halves. So we have a 65 to the 3 halves. And then um, over here, we have minus 4 times 0 squared is just 0. So we have minus 1 to the 3 halves and 1 to the 3 halves is just 1. Because 1 to any power is 1. So we have 65 to the 3 halves minus 1. And then we have a 1 12th out front. Okay. And then um, that's actually all they make you do because with 65 to the 3 halves, you could write it as 65 cubed and then take the square root of that, but they don't bother to do that for whatever reason. So they actually want you to leave your answer like this um, if you're in my math class. Um, so this is how they do it on my math lab. This is how they leave their answer. Okay. So that completes our lecture on line integrals. Thanks for watching and have a good day.